Nobody in our dugout wanted to go to game two. And we knew that Sammy was the, the guy that we were going to that day. Well, I had all the confidence in the world with the guys behind me. Um, they do it every every weekend. I knew this game would be a lot of, like a roller coaster, a lot of ups and downs and emotions going flying high. So I knew that our pitching was very limited and uh, I didn't want Pop to have to throw me in there. We had so many chances, we were leaving guys on base, and finally the big hit. Kurt came up with the big hit, so it was kind of like a long time coming, and once it came, it was we could feel the momentum coming back on our end. Going into the eighth up by one, I don't want to say that we were counting outs, but I think everyone in the back of their mind was thinking that. In the ninth inning, when they had a runner on third base in less than two outs, there were thoughts through our minds as, as a staff um, that they might squeeze bunt. The suicide squeeze wasn't even in the back of our mind, it was in the front of our mind. When Galvin gets on third with nobody out and doesn't score, I, you know, I was kind of speechless. I, I thought for sure that was going to be the inning, and uh, it didn't. It's, they made some plays and it didn't happen. But uh, you know, we, we kept putting pressure on them, and I, I knew it was going to come around. In the top of the tenth, Hunley only had to throw five pitches, and easily the play of the game, maybe the play of the year, was uh, Snotty, Jacob Snodgrass, diving in left field. Flashing the leather, showing it off. Truly, he's the greatest ever to do it. First pitch thrown to Adam was a ball in the dirt. It gets by the catcher, and Nate was on third, and he takes off running and, and scores a winning run, and the rest is history. I was so caught up in the fact that, you know, Stimley took off running that I didn't realize that I was even on the base anymore. I was watching the ball, watching Stimley, watching the ball, watching Stimley. I think at one point I even started yelling, like, Stimley, go, go, go. And, uh, and I knew from that, you know, as soon as Simley slid across the plate that, you know, it was over regardless. So I, I, I think I took off running from second base before Simley even made it across the plate. Everything just happened so fast. Next thing I know, I'm under a dog pile, feeling like my femur is going to be shattered into a million pieces. And all I was thinking after is it's going to make the coolest phone background ever, which still is. I grabbed Logan Mallory, one of the biggest guys, and, and just tackled him into the dog pile. And Ethan Maxey looking like a flying squirrel coming over the top, but it was a blast. I remember seeing Adam Brown, and we were just on the bottom, and although it's probably chaos on top, he's just sitting there, and we're having a full-on conversation, and he just goes, Nate, we did it. <laughs> I'm like, we sure did, Adam. When I see that, it's all the hard work, all the stuff that they had prepared to do for the whole year. All that stuff kind of comes together as one, and you know you're a champion. It's just the bar's been set higher. I mean, whenever I came in as a freshman, we, we were new to the GMAC, and the whole thing was just win a GMAC championship. And now that we have, we know that there's no excuse not to be able to win it again. Now the target's on our back. Um, we're excited about the challenge. The sky's the limit for us.